Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Lizzie. And welcome to today's session. Is it just the two of us? It's just going to be the two of <laughs> us. Um, by now, people should know that we have this session every Tuesday, and mm. if they need to be reminded, then I don't know. Okay. Anywho, how are you doing? I'm good. And how are you? I'm good. Yeah. You're just fearing the weather. Oh, it's cold in Cape Town. Yo, it's cold today. Mm. Are you I also from Cape Town? Yes. Oh, yeah, no, it's very cold. No. It's winter, it shows that winter is here with us. Yeah. Okay, so um, let's just continue with today's session. Okay. So please also make sure that you complete the register. They okay. have posted the link on the chat. Today we're going to look at chi-square test. Um, we're going to look at how we answer questions relating to the chi-square test because there are two ways of calculating the chi-square test. So we can do chi-square test for goodness of fit test or we can do chi-square test for independence. So both of them will require us to use a table um, to get the critical values and for making a decision because anyway, we will be doing a hypothesis testing. So looking at the session plan for this month, today is the 10th, so we're doing, we're learning the basic skills that we apply on chi-square test and the following three weeks, We'll start looking at the non-parametric test where we look at the three parametric tests, the non, um, they will, will concern rank test and they will concern sign, uh, rank sum test and the sign test. And after that, we're going to look at how we do um, calculations based on the relationship, measures of relationship, looking at linear regression and correlation as well. And also how do we define the regression line and how do we determine the correlation coefficient and correlation uh, and the determinant of, uh, the coefficient of determination. And then the last session for me, which will be on the 31st, we will then look at um, the forecasting and time series as well. Okay, so if you have any questions before I start with the summary of what you need to learn. No, I don't have any questions. I think I must just keep on practicing. Okay. So then let's go dive in. Um, so the requirements for today, you need to have your statistical tables with you. You need to know which formulas we're going to use. And you also need, just need a calculator. So make sure that you have all those three next to you. Um, if you don't know where to find it, the statistical tables, usually they are at the back of your textbook. They are at the back of past exam paper. Sometimes they are also included as tutorial letters in the tutorial letter. I'm not sure if your study guide has the, the table, statistical tables. Okay, by the end of the session, you should learn how and when to use the chi-square test for goodness fit test, and how and when to use the chi-square test for contingency table, which is for independence. When we calculate the chi-square test, either whether we're doing it for goodness fit test or we're doing it for independent, we're always going to calculate the test statistic. And the test statistic for chi-square, it's given by that sigma squared, that chi squared, the Greek letter chi squared, which is the sum of your observed frequencies minus your expected frequency squared divided by your expected frequency. <clears throat> 
and we're going to use this to go find the degrees of freedom and the degrees of freedom because um, in some instances, the degrees of freedom, we will use your rows and columns. And if we only have um, for goodness of fit test, then they, it will always be the degrees of freedom will always be, or we will always use a two by one case, which will give you a degrees of free, a two by two case, which will always give you a degrees of freedom of one. And I will show you how to, to calculate all that or how to find the critical values and so forth. With any hypothesis testing that you do, you always have to have some assumptions. So when you do your chi-square test, we need to always make sure that each cell in the contingency table has the expected frequency of at least 15%. At least five, sorry, not 15%, at least five. So at least the value, the observed value within the contingency table should have a value of more than five. Then when we go and make a decision, because this is a hypothesis testing that we're doing, we are going to do or make a decision based on our critical value and test statistic. If our test statistic is greater than the critical value, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. So we can also use the belly-shaped curve in order to guide us where our critical value is at and where are we going to reject the null hypothesis or do not reject the null hypothesis. So let's look at the chi-square test for goodness of fit test. So if we give in this example, especially with the goodness of fit test, then it means you will be given a table with only one measure. Um, for example, like this, this follows a sample of babies born in a city in 2015 by month of birth. So babies that were born in January, they were 24, in February they were 23, and so on and so on until you get to December. There were 29 babies born in December in 2015 in that city. And as a researcher, if you want to test a 2.5 level of significance, whether the, new, the number of babies born in the city are evenly distributed throughout the year, then we need to do a chi-square test of independent of goodness of fit test. How do we then do that? The first step is to always state the null hypothesis and all an alternative. Uh, always when you do hypothesis testing, where we're going to state it by saying the null hypothesis will state that the number of babies in the in the city is evenly distributed throughout the year. That will be your null hypothesis. The alternative will say the opposite, and that will say the number of babies are not evenly distributed throughout the year. And we have our null hypothesis and alternative, and we will make decision to either see whether are we rejecting the null hypothesis. Step number two, we need to do some calculations. So we need to calculate the number of babies in the sample because if you look at our table, they didn't calculate the total. So it, when you receive a table like this and you know that this will be asking you questions about the chi squared, you just need to create a column there and call it the total or a row, depending on how the data is given to you, whether in a row or in a column format. So you just create the total and add all of them. And if you add 24 plus 23 plus 20 plus 18, you will find that there are 252. There were 252 babies born in that year. Step number three, you just need to make sure that you're able to calculate the probabilities and the expected values. So now the probabilities are just your percentages that you're going to be calculating using, or the, we can call them also the relative frequencies that we will calculate using the observed value because 24, 23, 20 are what we call observed values. So the observed values divide by the total will give us the relative frequency. And then that relative frequency 
we're going to multiply that. So let's look at this. So in January, the probability will be. Oh, sorry, uh, my bad. The probability we will calculate based on the number of days you have per um, per month. So, for example, January has 31 days. February has um, February has 20. We're going to assume we we're not going to use the leap year. Uh, 28 days. Uh, March has uh, 20. Uh, March has 31. April 30, May 31, like that, like that. So we okay. calculate the probabilities by using the number of days we have. And, and then to calculate the expected value, we're going to take our We're going to take the probability and multiply it by the grand total, and that will give us, will give us the expected value for each month. So let's do that. So we're going to calculate and say 31 divided by the um, 31 divided by 365. 31 divided by 365. That will give us 0 0.0849, and we multiply that with 252 and that answer will be 21.40 and that is the value we will write under january and we do the same 28 divided by 365 we'll get the answer multiply it by 252 we'll get 19.3 uh, 19.33 so all the days that have 30 or all the months that has 31 days we can just substitute the 21.4 and then we go to april has 30 days and we also say 30 divided by 365 times 254 it will give us 20.71 and then we add for all the uh the, the months that has 30 days and if we add the sum of all expected values we will get the same total as the sum of the observed values. So now we have our observed value and our expected value. So now we can do, can calculate our test statistic. And our test statistic, remember, it is given by the chi squared is equal to the sum of your observed minus your expected squared divide by the expected. So what does that mean? It means we're going to say um, this is the same as saying 24 minus 21.40 squared plus 19.33 minus, uh, sorry, observed is not 19, observed is 23. 23 minus 19 point oh sorry the other thing that i forget always is to divide by the expected value so you need to also divide by the expected value 19.33 squared divide by 19.33 plus until you do all of them until you get to 29 minus 21.40 squared divide by 21.40 and that after you have solved the whole equation it you will get 7.72 and that is our test statistic now we need to go and make a decision but first we need to go and find the critical value finding the critical value we use the degrees of freedom because there is only one um uh, one column so here the degrees of freedom will be made up of the number, the number of cases minus one. So the number of samples, there are 12 from January to December. If you count them, there will be 12, 12 minus one, and that will be our degrees of freedom. Um, so we're going to use chi squared of the degrees of freedom and the alpha value. And in this instance, remember our alpha value was 2.5, was 2.5%. And if we divide this by 
by 100. So therefore, we will have chi squared of 11 and 0, 0,025. So we need to go to the table. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep everything. And then I'm going to stop sharing now. I, I want to go and share my entire screen at this point so that then we don't have to toggle. OK. can hide this. Then I can open this old tutorial letter and go to the right at the end. Let's make it bigger at the end of this to go to the table. So we need to find a way these tables, we need to go find critical values of chi. Like we have here, critical values of T, we need to go to critical values of chi squared. And as you can see also the symbol here, the, this picture here, it shows you where your critical value will be. So remember at the moment, we are doing 11 degrees of freedom and 0, 0,025. So the 0, 0,025, you will find it at the top and 11, you will find it going down, running down here. So there is our 11 and we're going to look for 0, so it's 0 0.97, 0 0.95, 0 0.9, 0 0.1, 0 0.02, 0 0.0, and there it is. And I'm going to just use my 11 as a guide. And our critical value is 21.9. So that's how you find 21.9. And that's how you find the critical value. And once you have the critical value, then you can draw yourself a picture so that we can make a, con a decision and then conclude. So for example, if I have to draw this, Remember our critical value, if we define it, it's from here, critical value, which was 21.9. And anything that falls here, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. So we know that our test statistic was 7.2. So if this point here is 21.9, therefore 7.2 falls in there, do not reject area so when we conclude let's i can just remove this okay so we, when we conclude we can say since our test statistic is in the region um of of um, of acceptance or we say we do not reject the null hypothesis because it falls in the non-rejection area. Therefore, our decision will be we fail to reject the null hypothesis or do we? our decision might be we fail to reject the null hypothesis. And in conclusion, we can say this means that our data is not sufficient to claim that the number of babies in the city is not evenly distributed throughout the year. And that is our chi-square for goodness fit test. Let's look at this exercise. Let's see if we can apply the same concept as that. So on this exercise, we are given um, the null hypothesis to be tested for this distribution states that the null hypothesis states that the proportions or the probabilities of all cell one till cell four, those are the, the P1 is equal to 0 0.2, P2 is equal to 0 0.4, and P3 is equal to 0 0.3, and P4 is equal to 0 0.1. And the observed frequencies of the values of a variable from the random sample population are displayed in the table below. And they have given us the table with cell uh, number one, two, three, and four, and the frequencies of 39, 78, 64, and 19. And those are our observed values. 
at 5% level of significance, use the goodness fit, goodness of fit to decide whether the distribution of the variable differs from the given distribution. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? Now, if we need to think about this, the question is asking us to find out which one of those statements, the five statements, is in um, is correct. So, number one, it says the sample size is equals to hundred. So we need to check if if we add all the frequencies, we will get a number of 100. So you need to add all of them. So that is your total. Your expected frequencies are, so we need to calculate the expected frequency. Remember the expected frequencies are calculated by using the total multiply by the probabilities. Where do you find the probabilities? Here are your probabilities on your null hypothesis. So you will have to come here and create some total. And we're going to use that total multiply by the probability and see if the expected frequencies are correct. Number three, it says the region of rejection at alpha of 5% is greater than 7.81. So it means we need to go find the critical value at 5% level of significance. So therefore it means you need to say how many cells or how many observations that we have here in terms of that so that you can get your critical your your critical value, which is your degrees of freedom and your level of significance will give you that. So you go to the table and go find the critical value and see if it's 7.81. And also number four, it says the critical value is 7.81. So you just need to make sure that you understand all that. It's the same as what is asked in number three. Number five, they ask you that the test statistic is 0 0.9371. So in order for us to answer this question, let's do it the same way as we would have done a hypothesis test. So, our alternative hypothesis here, we can even state it. It will say they are not evenly, dis like the statement as it says, they differ. So, here we will say they do not, they do not differ. The distribution does not differ. That is the, the alternative hypothesis. So, what else can we do? Let's go find the total. So add, calculate the total, 39 plus 78 plus 64 plus 19. It's 200. It's equals to 200. And let's calculate the expected. So let's calculate the expected frequencies for this table. So for cell number one, we're going to take the probability multiplied by 200. So 0 0.2 multiplied by 200. That's 40. That will be 40. And this is those ones we call them observed. This one I'm going to call them expected. So let's do the second one. 0.4 multiplied by 200. 80. That will be 80. Uh, 0 0.3 multiplied by 200. 360. Uh, 0 0.1 multiplied by 200. 20. 20. So now we have step one, step two, step three. Let's go and find the critical value. The critical value, we find it by using the 
chi squared and alpha. Our alpha is 0, 0,05. And our, our degrees, remember it's n. N minus 1, right? The degrees of freedom. It's n minus 1. How many do we have? How many columns do we have? We've got we have four. four. Yes, so it will be 4 minus 1. Therefore, our degrees of freedom here will be equals to 3. So we need to go to... Keep... We go to the table. We look for... What are we looking for? 0, 0,05. You're looking for 0, 0,05 and 3, right? That's what we said. Our degrees of freedom is 3. So our chi squared, we're looking for 0, 0,05 and, and 3. So there is 3. Go look for 0, 0,05. Which is that? Seven, seven point eight one. Which is seven point eight one. Eh? That is what we are looking for. So our critical value is seven point eight one. The next one is to calculate the test statistic. Since I did remove that. Remember, is the sum of your observed minus your expected squared divided by your expected. So our observed are those frequencies there. So you're going to say, I'm going to give you some time to calculate 39 minus 40 because 40 is our expected. Squared divide by 40 plus um, 78 minus 80 squared divided by 80 plus 64 minus 60 squared divided by 60 plus 19 minus 20 squared divide by 20. I'm going to open my calculator. Use that one. I'm going to come up just now. Come on. Yeah. I need to find the one that is working. Are you winning? Still trying to get to open up a calculator on my site. Why are you not opening?
Okay, and I will have to calculate manually now. So, oh, there we go. Why is it saying activate my license? I got um, 0.4416 recurring. I can check with Lindy Wayne in the meantime. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, my calculators don't want to work today. It's fine. Uh, so, 39 minus 40. I just want to double check if you got the squared divide by 40. Did you calculate manual? It's 0, 0.025. Yes, I did manual. Yes, I did manually. Yeah. So the first one would be 0, 0.0. So this one, 30 minus 40, 30 minus 39 minus 40 squared divided by 40 will give you 0, 0,025 plus, and do the rest, 78 minus 80 equals squared. Divide by 80 is 0, 0, 0,05 plus 64 minus 60 equals squared. Divide by 60 is 0, 0,26. I'm going to round it off to four decimals. It will be 0, 0,2667 plus the last one was 19 minus 20 squared divided by 20. It's 0, 0,05. 0, 0,05. And you just add all of them. 0 0.025 plus 0 0.05 plus 0.2667 plus 0 0.05 equals the answer is what did you get? Actually, I need to revise my first answer. It's not 0.39166. Not 0.391, yes. So if I leave it to Four decimal since there they've got four decimal. The answer for my chi squared is zero comma three nine one seven. Okay, now let's answer the questions. Let's see. Here it says the sample size is hundred. Is it hundred? Do we have four? Do we have hundred or do we have only four samples? Only four. So this one is incorrect. I'm going to skip. And we are looking for the correct answer, right? And I think we have a, a problem. Usually, most of the time, these things, we always have problems with this. So the second question says, so I, which one of the following statement is correct? The expected frequencies are 40, 80, 60, and 20. What did we get? Expected frequencies. Yes, they are 60, 20, 40, 80, 60, 20, yeah. And that will be your, your correct answer. Number three, it says the region, the rejection region at alpha of 5% or the 5% level of significance is chi squared greater than 7.81. They say the rejection area is this 7.81 because it will be anything that falls 
on this side, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. And this is one of those cases where I am not sure what they expected you to do with this question. Or are they saying, are we rejecting the null hypothesis or not? Or are they asking you that question? Because if that is the question, then that it would be incorrect because we're not rejecting the null hypothesis, right? Because if this is our critical value, our chi-square test will fall in the do not reject area. So therefore, that statement will be incorrect. Statement number four, it says the critical value is 7.18. We know that the critical value is 7.81. So they moved around 8 and 1. If you don't pay attention, you will think that is the right one, but that is not the correct one. And the last one, the test statistic is 0 0.9371. And you can see that there they also move around the values. If you don't pay attention, you might think that is the correct one. So the only correct answer here is option number two. Okay, so now let's look at, do you have any question before we move? Any question? No, I'm all right. Good. Um, let's look at how we do chi-square test of independence. The, 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 the previous one that we did was chi-square test of goodness of fit test. And you will know that this is chi-square test of goodness of fit test because in the statement, they will also tell you that this is a chi-square or this is goodness of fit test. And you will also recognize by things that you see, like in the hypothesis, it will give you the probabilities and they will give you also sometimes a cell with frequencies. They might not also call them cell. They might, it might be months. And also it might not be called frequencies. They might say it's observations or something like that. But you must know that that uh, information, you can use it to find the chi-square test of goodness of fit test. So let's look at independence. With independence, we want to see if they is a relationship between two categorical variable. So your null hypothesis will state that they are independent, and always it will state that they are independent, or there is no relationship. Because if they are independent, it means they don't have any relation. So that will be your null hypothesis. Your alternative will state the opposite. It will say they are dependent, or it will state that there is a relationship between the two categorical variables. So let's look at this. Oh, before we look at that, so similar to the goodness of fit test, you need to also calculate the test statistic. And here, the test statistic, it's also your sum of observation or observed um, frequencies minus your expected frequency squared divided by your expected frequency. However, this expected frequency, we're going to calculate it differently to what we have been calculating the expected frequency previously. And also to find the critical value, we're going to use the degrees of freedom of the number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one, because here we're dealing with a contingency table. So, how do we calculate the expected frequencies? We use this formula. We need to make sure that on our contingency table, we calculate the totals. You must make sure that your table has totals because we're going to use the total columns and total rows to calculate the expected frequency. And your grand total, this is your grand total, your grand total is the number of or your sample size. So we're going to calculate the expected frequency by saying row total multiplied by column total divided by the grand total. To make a decision, also similarly to what we did previously, since we're going to be using the test statistics and the critical value, and a chi-square test is a one-tailed test and is an upper-tailed test. Tail test, so it means 
if your critical if your test statistics is greater than your critical value we reject the null hypothesis otherwise we do not reject the null hypothesis so let's look at this example the meal plan selected for 200 students is shown below so we have class standing in terms of the levels freshmen so far junior and senior and the meals per week are selected those who prefer 20 meals per week those who prefer 10 per week those who prefer not to have any meals and you can see the totals are already calculated so there are 24 freshmen who prefer 20 week meals per week and there are 14 juniors who prefer 10 meals per week and there are about 10 people who prefer or seniors who prefer none meals per week and there are 88 people who prefer 10 meals regardless of what standing they are in in terms of their class there are 88 and with regards to the sofa some four there are 60 of those who who are in the class standing of some so far more Okay, so how do we then do chi-square test related to this? So the first step, we need to state the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis, the meal plan and the class standing, because we do have those two categories, are independent. Or we can say there is no relationship between meal plan and class standing. The alternative will state that there is a relationship between meal plan or class standing, or we can state it in this way, meal plan and class standing are independent. Because we're dealing with contingency table, and remember, in order for us to calculate the expected frequencies, we use the row total multiplied by column total divided by the grand total. So this is our observed table. We can create next to it a similar type of a table which will create a expected frequencies. In order for us to calculate the expected frequency for freshman 20 weeks, we're going to say the row total, which is 70, multiply by column total, which is 70 of that. The row total, column total divide by the grand total which is 200 and the answer you will get will be 24.5 similar to if i need to calculate the expected frequency for junior for that that will be the row total which is 30 column total which is 70 divide by the grand total and I can complete the entire table of expected frequencies and that will help us to calculate the expected the test statistic. Now once you have your expected frequencies and your observed frequencies you can come and calculate your test statistic. So our observed was 24 minus 24.5. Remember that is the first one that we calculated. Squared divided by 24.4. And you do until you get to 10 minus 84 div uh, squared divided by 8.4. And the answer after you have solved this, you will get an answer of 0, 0.709. Now to go find the critical value, we need to not forget. To find the critical value, we're going to use chi squared of degrees of freedom and alpha value. And we know what the degrees of freedom is. The degrees of freedom is our number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. So what do I mean by that? We Come to the observed table. You do not have to count the total, so don't count this. That doesn't uh, count. 
So we're going to count the number of rows. So we have one, two, three, four rows. The number of columns, one, two, three columns. And we just come in, substitute four rows, three, four rows, three columns. And four minus one is three. Three minus one is two. Three times two is equals to six. So therefore, here yeah, we will have our critical value of six and 0, 0,05. So we need to go to, we need to go to the table, six and 0, 0,05. So critical value of six and 0, 0,05. So we come here, we look for six. We come here, we look for 0, 0,05, which is that one. So we, they both meet. So our, our critical value is 12,6. And that is our critical value of 12,6. And now we are ready to make a decision based on the test statistic and the case, uh, the critical value. So remember, you can also draw yourself a table and define your critical value. Your critical value is 12,6. Therefore, anything that falls this side, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. So where is 0, 0,79? It falls in the do not reject area. So we can say in our decision, the test statistic of 0, 0,709 it's less than the critical value of 0, uh, sorry, our critical value of 12,9 uh, 12,6 So we do not reject the null hypothesis because it falls in the do not reject the null hypothesis. And we can conclude that there is not sufficient evidence that the meal plan and the class standing are related at alpha of 0, 0,05. And that's how you make a decision. Easy, right? Or more complex? So let's look at an example of how you get the questions in the exam. So the question will look like this. According to the Center of Disease Control and Prevention publication, HIV and AIDS civilians report, the number of AIDS cases in South Africa in 2007, classified by race and gender, is shown in the table of contingency. Yeah. So here we've got two categories, male, uh, sorry, gender and female. Number one, or the very important thing is the table has question marks. And underneath that table, it says hint, complete the missing value. So before you can even do anything to answer the questions below, they're telling you complete this table first and then go and answer the question. And the question asked, is which one of the following statement is incorrect. So it means we're going to have to find the incorrect answer. Before we find the incorrect answer, let's complete the table. Easy to complete because this is a contingency table. You can start by female because if I need to know how many of those, this is the total. Therefore, it means I can take 1, 2, 5, 3, 4 minus 1, 0, 5, 6, 3 and complete that. To complete the second one of the total, you just add the two values and get the answer. To complete this last one, you just add all of them. They will give you the answer. Now you will be left with that, that, and that. So to complete it, it will be easy to complete because if you have the answer here, you can just add those two, subtract them from the four to nine, six that will give you this one and you can calculate that one 
And because you would have the female, you can add all of them and calculate this. Or because you already have the answer here, you can just subtract this from there to get this one. Okay, I'm going to give you five minutes or two minutes actually to complete the whole table. I will check back. You will give me the numbers. I will write them on the board. Complete it on your side and then we will talk. Are we winning? Yes, still cal calculating. Are we winning? Are we done? Yes. Okay. Just yes. give me the numbers. Tell me which one is it white female? 1971. 1971. Uh, which one is the easiest one as well? So let's do males, total of males. Thirty-one, one, two, eight. Sorry. No problem. And the other easy one is the black. Total. Two, one, four, four, three. Two, one, four, four, three. And okay, now we can complete the rest of the table. And then Indian total. That's eight five one nine. One nine and Indian female two zero four eight. Two zero four eight. Is it twenty forty eight? Yeah. 
Yes, yeah, I got the same as well. Okay. And total female. One, one, two, one, five. One, one, two, one. Come on. One, five. Okay, so now your table is complete. Let's answer the question. You're missing a one. One, one, two, one, five. Huh? One, one. Oh, they didn't write. That's why there's space in between. Sorry. Okay. So which one of the following statement is incorrect? The now hypothesis states that the two variables are independent. So always in your now hypothesis, it should state independent, right? Always remember that. So this statement is correct. But we're looking for the incorrect one. So I'm just going to tick here to show that that one is the correct one. Alternative will say the opposite. If the null hypothesis says independent, so therefore the alternative will say it is dependent. So those two statements are correct. The number of cases that, are, uh, that were white female is 1971. Is that true? Yes, it is. Females? Yes, it is. The number of eight cases that were Indians, there are 8519. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Yes, it is, because it is that one. The expected frequency of black males is equals to 14247. So we cannot say whether it's right or wrong. Let's assume. To calculate the expected frequency, we say row total multiply by column total divide by the grand total. We're looking for black female or uh, black males, black males. That is the value that we are looking for. So we go row total is 21443. Column total multiply by 31281. Divide by the grand total, which is 42496. What is the answer? What answer do you get? The answer is one five seven eight four point zero four, and therefore that is the incorrect answer. Right. Let's look at the next question. Consider the chi square test results given here. So now, here, yeah, this is the other thing. They can give you a contingency table or they can give you information relating to a contingency table. And this is one of those cases where they give you information relating to the contingency table and already they have calculated some of the measures. And then they just expect you to understand and know how to conduct a hypothesis testing, especially a chi-square test hypothesis testing, whether it's for the independent or it's for the goodness of fit test. So now, in order for us to know that this is a goodness, um, a, a chi-square test of independent is because they mentioned here yeah, rows and columns. If they didn't mention rows and columns, they would have mentioned number of observations and 
on the sample size and the, the degrees of freedom, and then they give you all the other measures. So because they mention number of rows and columns, therefore it means we're doing a test for independence. But also in the question, they will also state like test the independence. So you will know that you're doing a test for independence. So consider this Excel chi-square test results for three hotel guests um, satisfaction surveys that was conducted. The test uh, was conducted and this is the information given as per the two table. One is the data part and the other one is the results part where it shows the calculation in terms of the case, the test statistic and the critical value. So we don't have to go to the table to look for the critical value. They gave us all the information. The manager wants to test independence of the two variables at 1% level of significance. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? Right, so therefore it means we need to do certain things. So we're looking for the correct statement. Which one of this following statement is correct? Number one says we failed to reject the null hypothesis. So therefore it means we should look at the test statistic and the critical value. So our bell shape curve, we create our critical value. They gave us it's 5.9915. That is our critical value. Our test statistic is 40, so it will fall somewhere in there. going to reject the null hypothesis, right? Are you still here or am I here alone? Yes. Okay, so therefore number one is incorrect. Number one is incorrect because number one says we failed to reject the null hypothesis. We would have failed to reject the null hypothesis if it falls in the do not reject area. So. Number one is incorrect. Number two, we reject the null hypothesis. Is that correct? We reject the null hypothesis. Is that statement correct? Ha, ah, guys. I just gave you number one. You can't give me number Isn't two. Isn't that same as, sorry, same as number one? No, it's not the same. Number one says we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Therefore, it means we do not reject. We do not reject the null hypothesis. Number two says we are going to reject the null hypothesis. And I'm asking, is that statement correct? Oh yes, it will because it will fall within the 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 area, the, the rejection, rejection area. area. It falls in there. If number one was not correct, therefore it means number two should be correct because number one says it falls in here, number two says it falls in here. So this is the correct statement. It falls in the rejection area. Then the other three statements, let we can just go through them in case number two was not correct. The calculation of the degrees of freedom would be five. So let's see if that will be correct. So if we give a number of rows that are two, so number of columns minus, or number of rows minus one times number of columns minus one, that would give us number of rows, we've got two minus one, number of columns, we've got three minus one, so two minus one is one, three minus one is two, one times two is two. So therefore that will be incorrect. That's how you will find the degrees of freedom. Number four, it says the chi-square test is a, is a negatively skewed test. This is a chi-square test. This side is positive, this side is negative. So it is always a positive, skew test. It's not a negative skew test. You can check it from here. And if you are not sure about that, you can even go to the table because on the table you do have a graph that looks like this or a picture that looks like that. The rejection area is less than 5.99, but already they gave us the critical 
the critical value, so we don't even have to. And we know that the rejection area will be greater than because it's in the bigger side. So this sign should say greater than, not less than. Okay, so that's how you will answer the question in the exam as they appear. Let's see more exercises of the previous activity. I think this will be, oh, we still have more time. Consider a multinom uh, multinomial experience, uh, experiment involving N of 150 trials and K cells. Uh, the observed frequency and the number of uh, hypotheses to be tested are below. Uh, okay, so here they want you, so they gave you the hypothesis testing and they give you the probabilities and the cell, um, the table that has free, uh, expected, uh, not expected, observed frequencies, and they're asking you, the critical value at alpha 0, 0.05 and the test statistics are. So you need to be doing two things. You need to go find the critical value, alpha and the degrees of freedom, and you need to go and calculate chi-squared test stat, which is the sum of your observed minus your expected squared. divide by the expected. Therefore, it means you need to go and calculate your expected frequencies as well. One, two, three. Since these are your observed, you need to go and calculate the expected. But to calculate the expected, you need to calculate the total here. Already they gave you the total. It's 140. So your degrees of freedom here will be K minus. Degrees of freedom here will be K minus 1. It will be K minus 1. And what did they give? Alpha. So you'll be going to... 0, 0,05 and k minus 1 is 4 minus 1, which is equal to 3. You go find that critical value. And here you need to calculate the total by adding all of them. So, but probably there are, are 150. Maybe 8 plus 50 plus 38 plus 24 it's 150 yes and they are asking you to calculate also the expected values remember expected value we use the probability times the total and you will write your expected value there and once you are done substitute I'm going to give you time to work it out and then we'll work it out together.
observed. Uh, please make sure that you are muted and there is no music playing in your background because sure, then otherwise the videos won't be posted. Hmm. Are you winning? Just doing the calculation now. Okay. Are we done? Are we winning? Just doing the last number. Okay. Let me know when you're done. I'm done. Are we all done? Okay, so let's... Are we all done? Silent means we are all done. Okay. 
almost. Okay, I'll give you time. Let me know when you're done. I'm done. Okay, so let's do the expected frequencies first. Um, so the expected frequency here will be 0 0.15 times 150. What do you have? 22.5. 22.5 and 0 0.4 times 150. I've got 60. Okay, and 0 0.35 times 150. 52.5 and 0 0.1 times 150. That's a 15. Okay, now let's substitute into the formula. Our observed is 38 minus 22.5 squared divide by 22.5 plus 50 minus 60 squared divide by 60 plus 38 minus 52.5 squared divide by 52.5 plus 24 minus 15 squared over 15. Um, the first one, what did you get if you did calculate them manually, individually? I didn't do them individually. Okay, I will get to you. Um, those who calculated individu individually, what did you get for number one, for the first one? I think it's 10.67. Okay, I'm going to keep four decimals since here yeah, they have four decimals. So it will be 10.6778 plus the second one. Just give me the values that you have. Don't worry, I will, I will add the decimals if you didn't keep four decimals. The second one, what did you get? 1,667. Okay, so 1,667. And next? Uh, 4,005. The last one I know is incorrect. 4,0048. I'm just going to keep that. And then the last one, what do you get? What did you get? You didn't calculate it, it's 5.4. Okay. What is your answer when you add all of them? That person who said they did this and they did it on their case you and found all of it. What what is your answer? My shop says it's 21.4778. Twenty-one point four. Seven seven eight. I'm rounding at eight. Rounding off. I'm not sure if I missed something. And if we add them manually, uh, in terms of the values that we have in front of us, then. 0.6778 plus 1.66. It's 217493. 20? 217493. So if we add them like this, then we get 217493. 
yeah so i'm not sure about uh, about that let's go find the critical value come on i want to go off okay critical value remember it's 0 comma 0 0.05 and 3 right we had 0 comma 0 0.05 and 3 so there is 3 there is 0 comma 0 0.05 where they both meet 7 comma 81 7 comma 81 that is the critical value so let's go back to our presentation Seven comma eight. There is no seven comma eight. So seven comma eight. No seven comma eight. And this is very fairly close. Um, and I think because we we round off too quickly as well. If we kept all the decimal, probably that would be would be the same amount. So the answer is twenty one comma seven four nine. Twenty one comma seven four nine two. That would be the correct answer. So if you don't have a cash flow and you are using a sharp calculator, I will suggest that you do the same way as I have been doing it. I'm using a cash flow calculator, a, not the cash flow, a sharp calculator. And because I know I don't have fractions and there are a lot of um, powers and an addition and division so you need to be able to know how to use your brackets correctly and where to place your brackets because you need to put everything on your calculator this whole part should be bracket oh and then you say open bracket again and you say 38 minus 22.5 and you close the bracket then you put the x squared and you press the division and you say it is 22.5 and then you close the bracket plus and then you do the same you will have two two brackets at the end with the division inside so you need to be able in order for you not to make a mistake don't try and solve it all at once on your sharp calculator use a casio if you do have a casio especially the fraction one then it makes it easy it tidies up and you will be inputting the data as you see it there and then press the answer button or the equal and it should give you the right answer. OK, so we only have five minutes left. Um, there's not much I can do with five minutes, but these are some of the questions that you get from your exam paper or your past exam papers. So. <clears throat> um, where they can ask you to find to calculate the test statistic and remember also the test statistics is the longest um, formula to calculate you need to have patience when you do these questions as well uh, you need to know how to state your null hypothesis and you need to know how to make a decision as well and this is another example so you need to be able to know how to calculate the expected frequencies remember your expected frequencies is your prob probabilities, which are stated in your null hypothesis, times the n. And you are doing a contingency table test, which is your chi-square test of independence. Remember, you will be given uh, you will be given an uh, a observed frequencies and then sometimes they will give you an an expected frequency already calculated if they do so maybe then they save you a whole lot of time but remember to calculate your expected frequency for any um cell you say row total times column total divided by the grand total which is your sample size um, and then you should be able to know how to get to the table to to find the critical value. Also, always, always remember that when you state the null hypothesis for the chi-square test for independence, always know that the null hypothesis always has independent or you say they do not 
or they are not related. And your alternative will state that there is a relationship or they are dependent. Or whether you can say there is no, uh, there is an association with your alternative hypothesis. So already we, you can see that with statement number one would be incorrect for this one as well, because it's vice versa. And you should be able to know how to find the critical value by going to the table, the critical values of chi and finding your critical value. On that note, so these are some of the questions I just went through. So in conclusion, by the end of this session, you have learned how and when to use the chi-square test of goodness fit test and how and when to use the chi-square test for contingency table, which is for independence. Are there any questions? How are you feeling? Any comments? Any last words? Please remember to complete the register. I'm just going to share again the link to the register. Oh, there is someone already shared that. Uh, please make, <laughs> make sure that you complete the, the register. Otherwise, uh, if there are no questions or comment, thank you for coming through. See you on Tuesday. Thank you, Slizzy. Bye. Bye. Thank you.